And good evening, everyone, or good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, welcome to this Frebel Trust webinar with Pete Morehouse. My name's Sasha Powell. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the Frebel Trust, and I'll be chairing tonight's event, which will be recorded and it'll be made available on our website in a couple of weeks' time. So if you know anybody who wasn't able to attend tonight and would like to watch the webinar, um, please do let them know that the recording will be available soon. Um, your camera and your mic is automatically turned off. Um, so you won't be visible during this evening's event. Um, but please do feel free to add comments. You'll see that there's a chat function um, in Zoom and you can write comments there as many people are already doing, saying hello from all over the place. Um, if you'd like to ask Pete a question, um, there will be time at the end of the webinar um, and Pete's very happy to answer questions. So please use not the chat, but the Q&A um, to put your questions for Pete. Um, so first of all, I just want to say thanks to all of you uh, for joining us to hear about a Frobelian approach to the wonder of woodwork. Pete Morehouse is an accomplished uh, sculptor, public artist, an early years creative consultant, an artist educator, an author of many, many publications, a campaigner and a trainer. And as well as being a leading authority, in fact, the leading authority on woodwork, <clears throat> excuse me, in early years education, Pete's also an avid researcher. Uh, recently, with support from the Winston Churchill Memorial Trust and Bristol University, uh, Pete's been documenting international perspectives on making and woodwork in early education. And in his Big Bang research project, his work with settings in more than 30 countries is bringing together data to show how woodwork provision contributes to all aspects of young children's learning and development, a fantastic project. Pete's also a fellow of the Royal Society of the Arts, and through that, he's campaigning to get hands-on experiential learning back into education. Pete's passionate about the principles of Frobelian pedagogy, and so he's currently training to become an endorsed Frobel Trust traveling tutor. Um, what a list of commitments and achievements. So we're very grateful to Pete for making the time to write our latest Frobelian Approach pamphlet and for sharing his expertise tonight. Who better to talk about the wonder of woodwork? Uh, Pete, over to you. Oh, thanks very much, Sasha, and um, yeah, and, and thank you everybody for for, for joining us th this evening. Um, I'm just going to switch over and um, and share my screen to to begin with. Um, so, well, we're delighted to be launching um, this new pamphlet, The Wonder of Woodwork, and I'd like to, to, to start by just thanking the, the Froebel Trust for making this possible, and especially to, to Jane Reed and the others that helped with the, the editing and with the new sort of interactive layout as well. Um, the pamphlet provides a, a, you know, a real introduction to woodwork and really looks at woodwork through a Frobelian perspective. Um, so this evening I'm going to give you a little tour through the, through the pamphlet so you can get a sense of, of what's, um, what's in it. Um, we start by, by taking a look at, at the core Frobelian principles. And for those of, the, you, of, of you who are new to, to Frobel, he was a true pioneer of early education. And at the, at the time, his ideas were completely revolutionary, but they're still so absolutely relevant today. Frobel's ideas were born out of his close observation about how children best developed and through his passionate philosophical um, approach about the, the unity of all things, um, believing that all things are connected, uh, that everything links. Um, he also saw children as being capable, autonomous learners and focused his approach on the central importance of play. He saw it was 
play and self-activity that drives um, learning and discovery as children express their ideas and, and creativity. In this way, he believed play to be purposeful and that meaning is, is created through play. And Woodworks, you know, is all about learning through doing. And, um, you know, Froebel very much believed in, in experiential hands-on learning, you know, learning through doing, hands, minds and body um, working together. And I think Woodwork certainly, you know, really draws children in. It really captures their, their imagination, you know, the smell and the feel of wood, working with a natural material, um, as well as, you know, using real tools. And I think, um, you know, children just take a, a real delight in what tools you know enable th them to do really it's you know the extension of the hands so there's a real engagement with that sort of physicality of using the tools but also you know woodwork is quite problematic and it throws up lots of challenges so there's really sort of like higher order thinking skills that are required at the same time to you know express creative ideas and to problem solve but the combination of these two the, the, the physical and the cognitive sort of engagement really leads to, to really rich involvement and we regularly observe you know really high levels of sustained you know engagement and this can be you know anything from an hour to, to two hours and sometimes you know children can spend all morning at the woodwork area so there is something quite sort of exceptional going on with woodwork which has got this you know power to, to really deeply um, engage children. The next um, sort of section of the, of the pamphlet looks at woodwork as, as an occupation. And for those of you who are uh, new to, to, to Froebel, the gifts and occupations were designed to, to inform children of the, the forms and harmonies and relationships in nature. They were um, designed to enhance observation and foster an understanding of shape, geometry and develop spatial thinking and they also introduce children to their the aesthetic dimensions of life as well as developing practical skills and crafting skills and, and, and creativity and there was also you know a really complex intentional progression within the gifts and occupations to get the occupations built on experiences with the with the gifts and allowed sort of greater um, possibilities for, for expression and also you know that they allow children to discover the, the sort of transformational and expressive um, potential of materials Froebel um, introduced woodwork in his school in Kilau, but it was not incorporated into his initial kindergarten. But later, as Froebel's ideas of kindergarten spread around the world, woodwork became rapidly incorporated as one of the occupations. And I think it was the idea of really providing a logical development within the, within the occupations, especially around sort of three-dimensional form. And when we can see on the, the bottom images there, you've got the, the stick and pea um, looking at these skeletal, um, you know, the hollow forms. And then we've got clay allowing that sort of malleable um, manipulation of form. And then we go on to wood, which allows that shaping through carving or, or whittling, and then the, the construction of wood and then the, the sawing and, the, the, and hammering with blocks and so forth. And I think there's actually a, a very beautiful symmetry um, that, you know, at the end, you know, with woodwork, children can actually make their own blocks, you know, cut off sections of wood, which takes them right back to the beginnings of those initial gifts of, of exploring with, with, with simple um, blocks. So it's a, yeah, a really lovely connection there. So as um, yeah, early education was first you know, established in schools, I mean, in the UK, that was at the latter part of the 1800s, that was in the nursery schools and elementary schools. It would have been the exception to come across a setting that wasn't um, offering woodwork. It was just part and parcel that was very much embraced at the beginning, very much inspired from these sort of Frobelian ideas. Um, and then this was a very similar picture around the world. And uh, as, as, um, as you know, Froebel's ideas um, spread, you know, we, we see, you know, examples of woodwork springing up in countries as far away as from the United States, in Japan and in New Zealand. Zealand. So a really far reaching impact and we, we see lots of yeah, delightful examples of, of woodwork right across the world now. Um, and then in terms of the, 
the, the value of woodwork is that the next sort of section of the, the pamphlet that we look at, which is all about the why of woodwork, really. Um, and I guess, you know, woodwork is, is just incredibly rich um, in, you know, in learning and development. Um, and Froebel very much um, believed in holistic learning, um, learning through play and exploration. And, you know, woodwork just weaves all of the different areas together into one activity. I mean, this is very beautifully summarized here by Helen Tovey, you know, through woodwork, all areas of a child's learning can be integrated into one meaningful activity, a key Frobelian um, concept. And then, you know, again, a lovely quote from Froebel at the, at, the, at the top here, you know, play at this time is not trivial, it's highly serious and of deep significance. Um, and I think, you know, that this is, you know, absolutely true and there is just so much going on. So I think what I'll try and do is, is just sort of tie in some of the, you know, the areas of learning and development that are interwoven into this sort of holistic framework of working and starting to, to begin with, with um, personal, you know, development, which is very much at the heart. I mean, it's very easy to marvel um, at what children make with woodwork. They make the most astonishing, you know, constructions and models, but the real transformation is really happening within the child and pers personal development is very much at the heart. And right from the beginning, you know, just that moment that we provide real tools for children, we immediately, you know, see a real boost to self-esteem and confidence. You know, they're feeling valuable valued by being, you know, by, by putting that trust in them to, to use the tools. They're feeling that sense of responsibility. So that has a huge impact right from the beginning. And then, you know, we feel great about ourselves when we learn a new skill. And it's exactly the same for, for young children. And, you know, that's really empowering and they gain confidence as they master the, the, the skills and techniques. So again, that's a real boost to, to self-confidence uh, and self-esteem. And then in terms of the um it, you know it really develops you know a sense of autonomy as children are putting their ideas into action making their inner thoughts outer um and we just see this you know, the most wonderful sort of you know the pride that they take in their in their creations but also that sort of sense of agency. And I think, you know, any of the, the sort of activities where children are really putting their ideas into action is really developing that, that can-do spirit, which is, you know, which I think is, is really empowering. And Froebel very much believed in that movement was imperative for, for learning, that children needed to be active in their learning. And I think, you know, woodwork absolutely, you know, really incorporates that. And this, it's so rich in terms of physical development. I mean, we can just see in this image here, we can, you know, that hand-eye coordination, the fine motor skills of holding the nail upright, gently tapping the nail to start with, to, to get it st started in the wood, um, really rich. And all of the tools have got, you know, different physical properties associated with them. And, you know, so it's full of, you know, your fine motor motor skills, gross motor skills, core body strength, absolutely integral. Communication and language is also absolutely in, in, integral. I mean, I guess if I'm honest, quite often at the woodwork bench, children are actually quite quiet. I mean, they're often absorbed in the flow of, of creating and in, 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 within their work. But at times when there is dialogue, it tends to be really rich. You know, either t children talking about their, their imagination or working through problems and problem solving together, either, you know, with each other or with the, the teacher in terms of some sustained shared thinking. And then also, you know, taking opportunity to reflect on the work, which again, Froebel was really keen that children, you know, do, you know, the, the importance of reflecting on work was one of his, his key principles. And then, you know, there are just a lot of opportunities. I mean, Froebel, again, very much believed in um, the social context of learning. And, you know, woodwork is, does almost necessitate three hands at times. So it almost draws children together to, to work together, sometimes to problem solve together, sometimes just to, to help each other out physically, holding something steady, um, for example. And then in terms of 
um, yeah, mark making, literacy, you know, again, that can be incorporated and in, in woven into this one activity. So, you know, initially it might be about getting ideas down in paper, you know, having a design stage um, to, to, to the process. It might entail mark making actually on the wood itself. Um, top tip felt tip pens are actually fantastic for, for doing mark making on wood. And then there's also, you know, numerous books that, you know, can be tied in with the literacy. There's lots of books around, you know, the, the, around tools or storybooks about about you know use of wood and tools as well so that's nice to make those links um, within the whole sort of wider context and then in terms of mathematical thinking I mean it's again it's a very logical progression um, going through the gifts and occupations you know with line surface two-dimensional shapes three-dimensional shapes so it's really again building on children's you know, uh, understanding of, of spatial development, numeracy, measure are all very much um, in, incorporated. So really rich for, for mathematical um, development on all levels, really. And then in terms of, you know, the wider understanding of the world, um, you know, making the sense of, of the world or, uh, around them. And I, I guess, I mean, in the image here, we can see this young child joining two blocks together and connecting it, connecting them together. And I think, you know, we can see this, you know, that woodwork is about making connections, both in the literal sense here, but both in the wider sense, in terms of you know, the whole, you know, wider context of woodwork. And um, Froebel talks very about the, the forms of life, knowledge and beauty. And, you know, these are all interwoven, uh, incorporated in woodwork, you know, the, just the beauty of wood, the feel of wood, the smell of wood, looking at the grain, um, you know, the, the, the knowledge, you know, thinking about the physical properties of wood, you know, wood burns, wood floats, thinking about the, the, all, all of the, the scientific knowledge that children are gaining from using the, the, the tools in different ways. And then the forms of life, you know, thinking about, you know, different things within the classroom that are made of wood. You know, how did that get to be how it is? Who works with wood? How does wood get from the forest, you know, to, to, to you know, become machined wood? You know, there's just so many avenues of possible exploration, really depending on what children are showing their interest in. But it's, there's almost, you know, un unlimited, you know, possibilities for, for understanding these, you know, forms of life, knowledge and beauty. And then Froebel very much, you know, believe children can only learn what they're ready for. And, you know, and they, they, and they need to learn at their, their own pace. And I think in this context, it's really important that woodwork is an open-ended activity where children have the freedom to, to gravitate, you know, to their ways of working that, you know, are developmentally appropriate for them, but also that build on their, their previous experiences rather than, you know, having very adult directed, you know, woodwork projects where all all of that is lost. And I think woodwork also is just a really rich multi-layered um, activity. So there's so just so many opportunities to build on previous learnings, learning and really to build that sort of confidence and uh, uh, knowledge and skills. So children will be you know, exploring in a variety of different ways. You know, such, some children will be, you know, just sort of, you know, tinkering, you know, that playful exploration, just seeing how the tools and the, and the wood, you know, operate and just joining things without anything particularly in mind what they're making. For other children, it might be more just schematic rep, rep, you know, repetition, you know, just putting one nail in after another nail. And I think, you know, that, that stage can be really important for some certain children, really building up their, their confidence. And then there's just lots of opportunities for, for different forms of, of symbolic representation, you know, either creating sort of like real objects that they've seen from life, you know, reenacting narratives or, or creating sort of abstract work as well. So a real breadth of different possibilities in terms of creativity. And I think it's particularly nice that, you know, everything, you know, everything that is made is, is completely unique and different, which I think is just such a joy to, to see, really. Um, and I think in terms of that sort of creativity aspect, that I think what you do see just so often at the woodwork bench actually isn't children hammering away and sawing. It's actually just staring at their work, 
trying to work things out. And woodwork, as I say, is quite a problematic material. It throws up lots of challenges and it's not so always straightforward and obvious, you know? So, I mean, this girl here is, is making a little butterfly and she's working out, well, what can I use for feelers? You know, now, how am I gonna join these feelers? Um, you know, so it just, you know, lots of problem solving involved, which really, I think, is again, another reason why we see this really sustained engagement, that it just necessitates that sort of higher level um, cognitive, um, you know, engagement with, with the word. Um, then the, the next section of the, the pamphlet looks at sustainability. Um, and I think, again, Froebel would, would very much, you know, obviously he didn't talk about its sustainability in you know, the terms that we do today. But I mean, his values were very much about respecting nature and the need for, for balance and harmony within nature. So I think, you know, he, he would very much, you know, value the, 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 you know, the whole agenda of sustainability. And today, you know, we're, we're you know, we're in a world driven by consumerism, you know, we consume and dispose items like no tomorrow. And I think, you know, that children through woodwork get an experience of what it really means to, to make things and to repair things, you know, which is just really positive. And also they get a, a sense of what it really means to, to design and to make and see their ideas come into to life. And, you know, in the future, you know, we're going to need more, you know, innovative designers to create efficiently and sustainably with, you know, resource conserving practices. So it's great that they're getting this sort of experience through woodwork. And I think it also develops children understanding of resources and particularly, you know, seeing the value of repurposing, you know, waste products or recycled materials, which we can do so, so, so much through woodwork and also seeing the, the beauty of wood. And I think, you know, that, that, that you know, builds a stronger bond to sort of the natural world. And I think, you know, the, that's the stronger that is, you know, the more likely children are gonna want to protect, you know, your, what we care about in terms of the, the environment. And again, the, the thinking skills, those creative and critical thinking skills developed through the, the processes of woodwork. Again, so important when we meet, you know, as we have to innovate, innovate and meet the challenges that, you know, we're facing in society for the, for the future. Um, the next bit of the, the, the pamphlet, to, I talk a little bit about, you know, inclusivity um, with woodwork. And I think the first, just a couple of things just to highlight here is, I mean, one thing we find is that the girls enjoy woodwork just as much as the, as the boys. Um, however, what we do do is introduce the, the tools to all children as a way really of counteracting some of the stereotypes that children have already encountered, which, you know, are incredibly strong already at sort of three, four, years old so and we found that after that you know when children you know choose to do it there's no gender difference which is you know really nice to see and then many many teachers have, have fed back to me of just how wonderful woodwork is for really capturing the imagination of, 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 of some children who typically find it harder to focus and concentrate on their learning. Um, it's just, just drawn in their, their attention and, you know, it's really been the, the key that's unlocked the, the, the barriers to their, to their learning. So that's been, you know, incredibly, you know, positive. Um, and then the, the, the booklet goes on to, to take a look at the practicalities of woodwork. So I take a look at the, the most suitable tools for young children to use, talk a little bit about how these, you know, can be, can be safely introduced, talk about setting up the woodwork area, you know, which can either be inside or can be outdoors as well. Talk about you know, how to manage your area, thinking about, you know, what are the most appropriate ratios. Um, and yeah, and, and I think the, the other thing that I really highlight as well is just the importance of not introducing too much challenge too soon. The woodwork can be quite difficult to, to work with. So it is worth being mindful not to introduce, you know, too big a pieces of wood, too big a nails, right, you know, early on. So the challenges are just become a little bit frustrating. We need to be quite sort of sensitive to, to, to graduate. You have an incremental sort of progression. 
then we, we take a look at the, the role of the, the adult in, in the, the woodwork area. And Froebel talked so much about, you know, the, the role of the, of, the, of the teacher is very much freedom, allowing freedom with guidance. And, you know, clearly, you know, with woodwork, we need this guidance to, you know, to introduce the tools and how to use them safely. And then as children, you know, are, are making and creating, you know, we can interact at times, you know, to be support children's, you know, problem solving and their creative thinking to discuss their ideas. So it's, you know, really involved with their, their sustained shared thinking and then making space, as I mentioned earlier, for children to reflect on, the, on their learning and, you know, to talk about what's worked well, what they might do differently next time uh, and so forth, you know, really important aspect. Um, then the, the, the booklet looks at the, the risks and health and safety. And I guess, you know, for those, I'm sure there'll be some of you out there who've never done woodwork before, and I'm sure you feel quite apprehensive just at the thought of children using, you know, real tools and, you know, have visions of children running around the playground wielding saws. Um, but you, I think you can be very reassured by the fact that the people who have done it are very quickly, you know, assured about just how safe woodwork is. And, you know, Froebel um, recognised the value of challenging and, and adventurous play. And I think it is really important that children get to experience risk within controlled circumstances. So they learn how to make, you know, decisions and, and, and judgments for themselves. So they're better able to, to protect themselves. I mean, a lovely quote here from the health and safety executive. The goal is not to eliminate risk, but to weigh up the risks and benefits. No child will learn about risk if they're wrapped in cotton wool. So it is you know, a real important part of child development that we allow children to embrace um, risk and challenge. Um, but of course, you know, health and safety is paramount. You know, it's really important that we take this seriously. You know, it's our prime responsibility as educators for, for, the, for the health and well-being of the children in our care. So it's really important that we put, you know, health and safety measures in place to, to keep the children safe. Um, but it's interesting that a lovely quote here from the Department for Education, you know, children should be able to experience a wide range of activities. Health and safety measures should help them do this safely, not stop them. So that's really important that, you know, we're putting these health and safety measures just to enable this to really happen and to children to get the most from the, from, from the activity. Um, and then in terms of, I, I mentioned just a couple of practical tips I and mean, we haven't got time to go into them now, but I guess if I was just to give one, I would say as much as possible, really try and stick to small nails. I think what I've noticed is there's quite a tendency for people to give young children quite big nails because we feel they're gonna be kind of a bit easier to hold and there's a bigger head for hitting, but it's a lot harder to hit a big nail into a piece of wood. You have to hit a lot harder. So if you keep to little nails as, as much as possible, it, it certainly makes woodwork um, a lot easier. So moving on to the, 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 the final um, bit of the, the pamphlet, just, you know, just summarizes my final thoughts. And I guess, you know, these are, you know, incredibly exciting times. You know, we're seeing a huge surge uh, of woodwork, you know, in early education within the UK, but right around in, in many countries around the world, which is really nice to see. And I think this is in part you know, a global sort of reaction to our over, you know, commercialized world. You know, we've been quite distanced from the making process. And we see this, you know, a lot. There's lots of programs on the television about upcycling and the sewing bee. And uh, a, a lot of this sort of more hands-on making it is really taking a, a resurgence, which is great to see. But um, Froebel's message of, you know, learning through doing is absolutely as, as relevant today as ever. You know, I, th I think children today arguably are having a greater disconnect with real life experiences through the increasing use of, of technology and the need for concrete, you know, first hand learning experiences to connect on a deeper level has really never been greater. So I'd really love it for you know, all children really to get there, you know, to get to experience the wonder of woodwork. And I really believe that, you know, that the skills, those thinking skills, you know, that children develop with through woodwork, you know, can really empower them and can really help them, you know, shape their, their, their futures. So in terms of, you know, clearly we've, um, you know, woodwork is not the easiest provision to provide. You know, there is quite a lot to know in terms of 
all of the tools, the health and safety, the, the, the incremental you know, progression involved. I mean, this, the pamphlets gives it a wonderful introduction, but I would really recommend you know, um, professional training. Um, I provide that both in-house and in response to COVID, I also developed that online. So there's an in-depth eight-hour online training course um, available now. Um, information's on the, the website there, Irresistible Learning. And there's also a, an in-depth book, Learning Through Woodwork, which again is a, you know, like a teacher's manual with you know, lots of you know, su supplementary information. So that, that might be really nice to go hand in hand together with the, um, with the pamphlet. I'm just going to leave you with one quote from um, Tina Bruce, um, with the, the wonderful you know, Tina Bruce. And here this is, woodwork is active learning at its best. So I'll leave you with this slide. So hopefully this has given, you know, th these images have given you some inspiration for your own woodwork to, to take off or, or set sail or blast off. Fantastic. So what we'll do now is I'll, I'll come back and start to taking um, a, a few questions. So. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Pete. That was a superb presentation. Um, we've had a number of questions coming in and um, they, they um, kind of coalesce around, I would say, four topics. And the first one, you, you, you mentioned that you want all children um, to have an opportunity to develop a, a love for and an engagement in woodwork. Um, several people have asked, what about the under threes? Um, would you involve under threes in woodwork activities? And if so, what kinds of things would you do to introduce the very youngest children? Yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, my general advice is to, to do woodwork from, from children that are three onwards. Um, just because, you know, we, we are dealing with a lot of small parts, small nails, small screws, you know, and often with younger children, there's even younger children in the room, so if there's bits falling on the floor. Um, and also we're dealing with, you know, maturity is still quite developing rapidly at this time, as well as is muscle control and grip. So it's, you know, so... I, I really think it's, you know, in terms of the woodwork as we've seen it in these images, it is better waiting till ch children are three plus. But there's lots of things that you can do to engage younger children with preliminary, you know, activities that really lead and build up to woodwork. I mean, young children can be doing lots of placing and arranging with natural pieces of wood, with bits of branch and tree rings. They can be using um, the wooden mallet, you know, the, the pegboard for, 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 for developing that, that the strength, the core strength of knocking pegs in. But there's a whole bunch of other activities they can do. They can use golf tees and tap golf tees into, you know, into fruit, for example. You can, um, you, you know, you can use a rubber mallet and take leaf prints or petal prints on fabric so uh, you can you can hammer golf tees into lumps of clay you know there's lots of different things mm. that the younger children can do so yeah great. Lots of, I mean, definitely yeah great uh, well actually Richard Cole's Brunt has just written that um, he introduces two and three year olds using golf tees hammered into egg boxes so there's another suggestion yeah. thank you um, somebody did say though uh, that they have two three four and five year olds all together in an outdoor area and want to be able to preserve the ability to do woodwork but that's very difficult with mixed ages and a limited number of adults have you seen kind of ways of getting around this that you might be able to share Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, obviously if you've got younger children in the space, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're not really going to respect the, the boundaries that we've only got two children at the workbench. You know, it's exciting. You don't see children soaring very, you know, and they would want to come and watch as close as possible, which, which is tricky. So the, the, the solution that most settings that have come up that with that are working with a mixed age group like that way is to have the area, just to have a small sort of fence around the area, just to demark the woodwork area. And then have a you know a rule in place of how many children can work in the woodwork area to, at, at a time to keep it safe in that context. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, the other question really is about getting lots of adults involved in woodwork. And so, what would you do to um, encourage and support uh, colleagues who might be less confident and perhaps less enthusiastic about woodworking? 
Yeah, well, I, I, again, I, I think, you know, it, it's it's natural that some staff, you know, are, you know, not so enthusiastic, you know, because a lot of people don't have, you know, much experience of using tools themselves, very little. And, you know, for many staff, you know, will say to me, I've never used a saw or, you know, or a hammer, which is, you know, which, you know, and that's, you know, we've really got to respect that, that, you know, you can't expect staff to, to introduce, you know, materials and, and tools that they feel very uncomfortable with. So I think in that context, you know, having some staff training can make a huge difference where everybody gets to experience the joy, you know, how much fun it can be to use these tools. And at the very least, you know, this can be something that, you know, you can do together as a staff team, you know, and I, I think, you know, really everybody, you know, should really experience working with wood before introducing it to children anyway I think it just makes us much more informed as teachers mm -hmm. once we've experienced materials ourselves first but it's certainly a great way to build up the confidence for, for mm -hmm. teachers to, to get that experience. Okay yeah. thank you Pete. Um, another question is about starting out really with woodwork for for those who are beginners whether they're adults or, or children um, the questions are both about what kinds of wood you might use and indeed in, in woodworking generally would you recommend sort of a hierarchy of wood um, and um, also what kind of tools would you start out with for beginners? Yeah, no, good, good question I mean the, the wood is, is an interesting question and it very much depends about what age children you're going to start with you know and if you are going to be starting with the youngest children and we're talking you know three four year olds that sort of preschool year and um, you know starting you know the softest readily available wood is pine um, but that is still quite hard and for some of the younger children they would find it quite frustrating starting with wood and the, the real danger is that you know a child's going to start and just think oh I don't like this this is too difficult and, and you've lost them they'll very quickly have made a judgment I don't like woodwork so I think it's really important that we're very careful of the way we introduce woodwork so it's a really positive start for every child mm -hmm. so what I've really recommended with the youngest children is to start with balsa wood just because it's incredibly soft um, and it just you know it's just it's so easy to hammer the nails in so easy to hammer into I mean to screw into so easy to saw that immediately children are gaining the confidence with those basic tools but it's exactly the same process when you move on to the harder wood but they've got that confidence that they know how to do it so it's just a matter of transforming those skills now balsa wood is actually quite expensive it, it's you know it's a little problematic in that sense so I mean again you know there are alternatives I mean one thing that you can do is literally just glue together a few layers of cardboard and make sort of like a cardboard block and just hammer the nails into the cardboard again if your children are learning how to hold the nail how to, how to tap the nail to start with and to get it into the cardboard so it's not ideal I mean I prefer the balsa wood in terms of it's an authentic wood but if it's not easy to get hold of it does make a huge difference this you know I call it the soft start and for the youngest children it really is important to have a, a, a soft start but then you know the most readily available wood is pine that's what most children would use for, for woodwork and mainly just getting off cuts that you know are left over from builders or um, you know pulled out of skips or you know recycled parents bring in off cuts you know we we, we, we never end up buying our, our pine so there's and what I would say is avoid using hardwood so woods that are like oak or tropical woods you know they're just much too difficult for children to work again it would become really frustrating for them and then mm -hmm. the the tool just very quickly I mean the, the, you don't need an extensive toolkit I mean we're basically talking four basic tools you know we're talking the hammer you know the short stubby hammers are absolutely ideal a little screwdriver um, the, 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 the little hand drill for making little holes and then saws and the saw the one is the one thing that makes a huge difference to get the right one and the best saw are saws that cut as you pull them towards you they're pull saws um, and they're just so easy for children to cut with and, you know you usually sawing is quite difficult it gets stark it's frustrating I mean even adults find it difficult but these pull saws and children uh, you know to be honest it's almost worth doing woodwork for that moment when a child first cuts through a piece of wood that almost that mixture of shock and surprise that they made this happen as this wood you know is cut in half it's, it's a real delight but yes pull saw is absolutely the way to go 
Brilliant. And and do you find that that as children begin, they want to test out all of those tools or do they te have a tendency to begin more tentatively with some than when with others or does it vary from child to child? Well, 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 we sort of like introduce them quite slowly just so they can gain their confidence with one tool and then move on to the other. So generally we, we start off with, with hammering and, and screwing as two different ways of joining together and then, you know, add in the, the, the saw and the, and the drill later but yeah as I say it's not a particularly extensive toolkit and in, in, in no time at all you know children you'll see just just how confident and, and competent the children are at using those tools and mm. you know you know we introduce the tools in small ratios to begin with um, it might be one to three children for, for three four-year-olds one to four children for to four you know four to five-year-olds one to eight for slightly older children. But very quickly, you know, those ratios can be relaxed when you see just how confident and, and fluid the, the children are, you know, working with the tools. The only tool that we would really recommend that you, you always supervise on a one to, with one-to-one -one supervision is the saw. Um, the, the pull saws are fantastic because you actually hold them with two hands. So you always know where they're hand, you've not, not got that issue of <laughs> one hand on the workbench close to their work. So the child who's sawing is actually very safe. The, the, the danger with woodwork is that, you know, ch we know children have the most insatiable curiosity. They don't see sawing very often and given half the chance, they would want to watch from right in front of where the saw is. So we always do it one to one so we can make sure it's clamped up tight and then to stand in front just to make sure no other child can put their arm or run in front of where the saw is to just to keep that. It's just a matter of you know, eliminating risks and keeping risks to an absolute minimum. Mm. OK, thank you. I'm going to ask you a completely different kind of question now, which uh, came in from Celine. Um, she said that she's found that children like to make weapons out of wood, swords and the like. Um, and of course, this takes us into arenas around um, uh, rough and tumble, risky play, adventure play, so on. Uh, what are your thoughts? Have you come across this? And uh, what kind of reactions have perhaps adults had to children wanting to make weapons out of wood? Um, and, you know, how might one deal with that sort of situation? Yeah, that's, that's interesting. It's sort of like, I mean, to be honest, in, in terms of my, my experience, it's been very seldom, actually. I mean, it, there has been a couple of occasions where a couple of children have, have made swords. I mean, I, to be honest, I just feel like I want to be guided where children's interests are. And if they've had a fascination in swords from, you know, that's their experience. And if that's engaging them and focusing them at the workbench, that's a learning opportunity. And, you know, we can talk about, you know, the, the, you know, the weapons and how we need to be careful around other people and not to make people feel threatened and all the other sort of dynamics. But, you know, I very much believe that children should be at the centre of their learning and we can respect their choices and decisions, but also mm -hmm. have discussions to open up other, other avenues. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. And another um, slightly different question, it's about... Um, enabling all children to experience woodwork. Um, it comes from Paula and she asks for your advice about how to encourage the spread of carpentry to all children in South America. There's a challenge for you. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's an interesting, I, I think, you know, it, it is really about just, you know, seeing is believing and I think the more that practitioners get to see you know little video clips of children doing woodwork seeing people sharing different things that they're doing on Twitter you know getting hold of the book getting hold of different resources and now I mean the, the Froebel pamphlet is another way of distributing that information and inspiring people and I think you know once you see and, and, and you know understand you know the rich learning and development and what a holistic sort of activity and how it really does bring all of sort of Froebel's principles together that you know why wouldn't you want to do it and I think it just generates a momentum and an energy itself really mm. so yeah I think just sort of taking advantage of the resources that are there. Mm. Okay, thank you. And one last quick question, because we're nearly out of time, Pete, really is about um, your Big Bang Research Project. Um, I believe that that is beginning to, to indicate how woodwork does contribute to 
all aspects of children's learning and development. Could you just tell us a little bit about the emerging findings and um, you know, what are the key things that you might want to share about that? Yeah, no, I think, I mean, it, it has been a real, you know, I mean, I was very fortunate to be able to visit so many countries as part of the, the, the Churchill Fellowship. And I think, you know, the, the, the lovely thing that you see is just the same levels of high involvement and engagement from children in Japan and New Zealand and Finland, you know, all over that woodwork is, you know, there's a real magic to, to the medium. But it's also really interesting to, 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 to unpick the, the learning and development, that, you know, and it is just so extraordinary extraordinarily cross-curricular that so many learning you know so much learning can be you know incorporated in one activity mm -hmm. um you know so we don't need separate tables with with mathematics and a few bun you know little bunny bears there and you know for you know all that shape and measure can be you know incorporated within this activity and i think that's really come out from from the big bang research and also really i think that just how good woodwork is for children's well-being and I think, you know, when you, ha you know, what we really want within our provision is, you know, lots of activities that really engage children in quite a sustained way. You know, we know when children are using, you know, in that state of flow, using their creative, you know, thinking, their, their critical thinking, you know, making their inner, outer, you know, that they're, you know, that, that this is having a significant impact on, you know, levels of, of well-being, self-confidence, and as I say, that sense of agency as well. It's just so, you know, that that personal development is, is you know, really, you know, really profound, I think, at the, at the workbench. And I think the other thing to say is that, you know, for people starting out, it, it doesn't happen straight away. There is quite a little bit to get organised. And, you know, to have that complexity takes time. You know, children have to be, build on previous learning, but it also depends on having quite a breadth of resources. Um, so it is quite resource intensive. You know, you need to collect lots of, you know, recycled and, you know, save all your leftover corks, um, you know, bottle tops, CDs, you know, bits of string and wire, everything can be incorporated. Fabric especially is wonderful combined with you know, with woodwork. So, yeah, just, you know, do, do, you, you, start off slow and build up, you know, it's about building your own confidence as a practitioner, as well as, you know, seeing how the children build up their, their confidence. But it's great. And if you, you know, if, if you're already doing woodwork, I'd really welcome you to, to contribute to that, the Big Bang Research Project, because it's this is really just collating as much information from as many people as possible to really just highlight the, the value and to also encourage you know, people in other countries to, to really embrace woodwork. So mm. lovely. It's, it's on the website, on the Irresistible Learning website. So Fantastic, fantastic. Well, I'm just um, gonna share the, the, the links um, again, Pete. And, um, to say a huge thank you to you um, we didn't manage to there were so many questions we didn't manage to get through all of them um, but hopefully we've touched on some of the main areas that were were being asked about so um, thanks to everyone for joining us tonight but especially many thanks to you Pete for a, a, a superbly informative and engaging evening and um, thanks a lot have a good night everyone yeah thanks for joining us thank you good night